So, hello, uh, my name is Bobby Downey. I'm the creative director at Wormwood, and we are here at booth, what are we, 2603 at uh, Gen Con this year, and I'm gonna be giving you guys a little bit of a tour of exactly what we got going on here. First of all, this is actually the first time we've had this uh, this booth, like the signage and everything like that, is actually wooden this year, because it dawned on us that we uh, are craftsmen and we should actually craft a booth from wood and not just buy rolly things from Kmart. So, <laughs> I think it came out very nice. Um, these are our standard tabletop uh, trays. They're obviously uh, for dice rolling. This is if you got like a lot of real estate on your, uh, on your table, um, and it's just like an oil, uh, water buffalo, leather um, as your rolling surface, and then this kind of partition right here is for a dice vault if you want to keep uh, your favorite set of dice. For the first time at Gen Con this year, um, what's actually really exciting for us is we have officially licensed uh, Dungeons and Dragons oh, table ta beautiful. tabletop trays now as well, and this is a this is a synthetic leather <clears throat> where the uh, the logo is actually printed. We tried the engraving on the leather; it didn't quite pop. But this uh, this red and black, I think, gave us the uh, gave us gave us the look we were going for. No, that's beautiful. We, thank you. It's yeah. going on my Christmas list this year. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, and this is actually we have we've had the uh, the black leather for uh, for a while on our website. The red leather, like the inverse of the red leather with the uh, with the black, is actually the first time we've had it um, at all. Is at Gen Con, so oh, it's wow. kind of being debuted here. Very nice. We move over here. <clears throat> We have typically had dice, but we've never really displayed them like this. Um, and this is the first uh, Gen Con where we've actually had gemstone dice as well. So we got a malachite, bloodstone, opalite, rose quartz, mahogany, obsidian, and uh, blue sandstone. They all come with a little pendant, and uh, we have our standard kind of acrylic dice down here. I don't need to go through all of them. There's a lot, but fun colors to choose from. Yeah, those are very nice. As we move over here, so, uh, for anyone who's familiar with HomestarRunner.com, probably was also into Neopets and E-Bombs World and then StickDeath.com, but this is uh, Trogdor. Trogdor uh, was kind of like the flagship skit of Homestar Runner uh, on his website. And they did a Kickstarter and they turned, uh, they turned Trogdor into the, uh, a board game where you went to burninate the city. And we ended up creating something that was... Uh, that was a little bit over the top and ridiculous, and we didn't know how successful it was going to be, and it turned out to be very successful. Their campaign went great; it was like a, uh, over a million dollars. But this was the uh, this was the tier that we did. So just I, I actually I, I backed that. Oh yeah? yeah, I didn't watch any of the other stuff you mentioned, but yeah, <laughs> I did I did watch Homestar Runner, and uh, I, and I'm, and I was. I would have liked to have gotten the stuff that the, you guys included on it, tier. but that was just a little, a little <laughs> out of my like league. Like I said, it was ridiculous. Yeah, we tried, really like, the, the, the goal was like, what's the most, because you think of Strong Bad, and you think of, and yeah. you think of like, what would he do? He would want to be so crazy and over the top, yep. and we were like, ah, oh, like, what? What could we, uh, what could we add in here that would impress strong bad, not just backer? So yeah. like, the the point was to be a little, a little ridiculous. Yeah. So now, now now that I have the game, I'm like, ah oh, man, I should have gotten that. But well, maybe they'll relaunch it. Maybe yeah. something better next time. <laughs> right. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Um, this is actually uh, tech. If uh, anyone's a fan of uh, Patrick Rothfuss in the uh, Wise Man's Fear, this is actually a game that was in that book that was brought to life by James Ernst. Um, and in that campaign, we did something similar to the Trogdor campaign where we offered our, you know, very expensive high-end tier. Um, and this board underneath here, this kind of just like comes up and it houses all the, uh, the pieces and components underneath. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, and yeah, and it's actually double-sided to where it has a tack board on one side and it has actually, you know what, just for, just... Ooh, living dangerous. I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm breaking all the rules of Gen Con. <laughs> it's Gen Con. Right, expect? right. It's got to be, you got to be crazy. Okay. And the other end here is a chest. Nice. Um, so, yeah, so it's just a, a little bit of variety and a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, an, an heirloom piece if uh, something like this means, you know, a lot to someone. Yeah, that's As beautiful. we keep on moving, um, let me straighten this guy out. So, I'm not sure. Um, what we got here are our complete dice tower systems. Uh, these are actually, these got an interesting feature. So our, our dice towers are actually magnetic. Um, so you can break them down inside the tray. Ah. It ends up being a 
cool little compact case, so you can just kind of throw it in your bag. Comes with a leather strap that keeps everything very put nice together. And uh, upon putting everything back together, we actually got uh, numbers on the inside. Look at so that! Forget how to put it together. You just match the one with the one. Bam. And that's yeah. It's easy. Now. This, these are fairly uh, recent, am I right? Or uh, They were relaunched on Kickstarter. That's recently. what it was. Correct. That's we what it we was. launched it originally, and I think it was about 2015. Um, and it was it was a big Kickstarter for us. It was before, it was when we were still in the CEO's basement. It was like four people. Um, <laughs> so then we did relaunch it with a lot of new designs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the relaunch went well, and it still continues to be one of the best sellers at like a con. Yeah. At a con. Like when people see it in person, it really speaks to them, but it's hard, you know, something like that, it's hard to convey over the internet. But once people yeah. see it in person, it's a it's a different story. And obviously this is a, your dice vault. It's just kind of houses your, your favorite set of dice or what have you. Nice. All right, moving along, because I'm, I'm really dragging, I'm dragging this out. Um, Right here, these are actually the, the Mistress of Maps tier uh, that Devin Rue, who is the uh, the cartographer that designed Matt Mercer's map of the Dwindalian Empire. Oh, okay. Um, oh, so that's beautiful. So we actually um, got permission from her to use some of her artwork to engrave on the relaunch. This was probably like one of the coolest things about uh, the relaunch. And um, yeah, it was only available in the Kickstarter. And uh, we are collaborating with her again for our, our Hero Vault relaunch, where she's got even more maps for us. Uh, and I think those are down there, actually. And here we are. Uh, this is a product that we're actually relaunching on Kickstarter um, later in the month. Uh, it's our Hero Vault, which is these guys right here. But right. We're relaunching it as a hexagonal shape. And we're also going to be doing interiors that are um, for minis. And we're also going to be doing dice interiors as well. Nice. Um, so it's going to be a little bit different. But this guy right here, this is actually a, uh, an officially licensed Gen Con. There's only 20 of these guys. And oh, there's wow. 100 of these guys. Oh, um, wow. So this is a cool little um, exclusive thing that you can only get at Gen Con. And then uh, obviously we have our D and D licensed hero vaults as well. This was part of our Adventures Arsenal Kickstarter. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, a lot of space inside here nice. for your minis, dice. We also sell uh, like really little mini pencils um, that can go in here as well. And uh, these aren't even available on our website. These uh, were available on Kickstarter, and these are just leftovers from the Kickstarter. Um, and the only things, the only ones that exist are, are right here. So as soon oh, wow. as they're gone, they're they're gone forever. Um, as we continue, this is, we have shirts and merch and stuff for the first time. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we got like this cool half side logo that's like on the, on the like rib cage here. And then we got solid logos and distressed logos that are cool looks. These just came back here. I haven't even, these literally just came in today. I haven't even, uh, guess I'll do the rest like that. And, um, <laughs> These uh, are some keychains. That, these were actually uh, things that were put into the goodie bags of D&D uh, &D Live this year. Mm. And uh, people ended up liking them, so we ended up just grabbing more of them and selling them at our booth. And these look like air fresheners, but they're not. Um, these are wooden stickers, actually. Oh. Uh, which, is, uh, which is very, very cool. I know the packaging came here, and I was just like, this is a... Yeah, yeah. Is this a, is this a air freshener? <laughs> it is not, it's not, it's not. They're wood stickers, I promise. Well, you know, maybe next time, air fresheners. Maybe I don't see a reason why we can't offer air fresheners <laughs> that smell like wood. Right. Like aromatic It seems cedar, like a, a perfect thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, actually, finally, right sure, before sure. you do that, I did see something that I recognized. The tabletop tiles. <laughs> Ooh, <an Easter> <clears throat> Tabletop tiles. Yeah. Um, these are, uh, this was our most recent Kickstarter, um, and they're basically hexagonal uh, magnetic tiles. Here, let me That's come around this way. Different types. So, let me see if I can pick this up like a platter. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh -huh. So, you have your. Um, you have your standard dishes that uh, can hold different types of opponent components for, uh, which is mainly mainly board games, um, and then you have your dice jail and your uh, and uh, your spell counter, which are for your kind of uh, RPG style games, and then obviously a little dice tray and a card holder that can be for anything. But yeah, these are just like completely magnetic modular pieces, and on the other side of all of them, we have coasters. Uh, so for any tile that you're not using, you can flip it over and not get a, a ring 
on your game table. Yeah, um, very nice. Now, you're, are you going to be offering offering these outside of the Kickstarter, I hope? Yes. Okay. Yes, we are. Awesome. Um, we plan to, except for the DM screen, we always plan to eventually get, you know, something that was really, really popular onto the, uh, onto the website, especially something like this because um, the Hero Vaults that we're relaunching, same size as this. So the Hero Vaults, since they're hexagonal, they're actually going to key into this design. So they can fit in here as well. So you can kind of house your mini or your dice inside here. So nice. the Hero Vault's always kind of been the black sheep of all of our designs because there's a lot of synergy between everything. Like the Dice Vault fits with this, the Tower fits with this tray. The Hero Vault's kind of like stood on its own for a while. Right. Um, but now with the relaunch, it's actually going to key into a, a different system that we have, ah, which is actually okay. kind of exciting because the Hero Vault, it's always bothered me about the Hero Vault. It's just like a square that doesn't work with anything. Yeah. Um, but now it's going to... And that's all. I was wondering why why you guys went to the hex shape, and now Hexes I know. Hexes are just better. Yeah, our yeah. are just better. I mean, they're replete throughout gaming. They're, you know, it's your standard one-inch grid whenever you're playing it. Like, it's just, it's just better. Yeah, it's just yeah. better. I think absolutely. Um, and it's a handsome. It's a more handsome shape. I think. Oh, yeah, there's, there's no, a lot going it's on. It's more dynamic. There. It's yeah. yeah. It's like any, anything closer to a circle with the curves. Yeah. Um, so these are our. Our gaming tables. Uh, we launched furniture about two years ago. Um, it's been going pretty well. Um, we started with the prophecy. The prophecy was our um, our first first uh, piece of furniture that we launched, and um, it continues to be our flagship. Um, so basically, what you have here is uh, a dual-sided magnetic rail. So these accessories are magnetic, and they can go anywhere along the entire um, the entire outside of the table. But you also we have magnetic rails on the inside, oh. so the accessories can kind of be, uh, thank you so much, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and yeah, so, what we also got here is a playing surface this, that ascends and descends. So, <clears throat> Whether you want your game flush or you want your game recessed, depending on what you're playing, um, that's what you can do. And we got here right now, all these three leads mm -hmm. are reversible. So you have a dual-sided playing surface. And once it's up above flush like this, you just flip it on over. And you can have a completely wooden playing surface. Nice. A completely suede playing surface or any, you know, mixture of the two. Uh, depending on whether you're rolling dice, you're playing with cards, or what have you. I like the uh, like mixing and matching, I think that's kind of handsome. And then also another, probably one of my favorite um, features about the table coming up this high is, mm -hmm. you don't think about it, but bringing up the table this high is really, really awesome for when you're cleaning it. Ah. Um, it's, it's a it's a great feature that you really don't think about. You just like, oh, I'm bringing up this high every time I flip it. But any time that you need to brush a bunch of stuff off, it makes it super easy. There's nothing worse than trying to clean a game vault that's inset somewhere. Um, yeah, I I, I got to admit, ever since I saw this table, I've wanted it, and I'm <laughs> I'm one day I will have that's one. That's the idea. I, I just hope I I just hope I, I make it happen before you guys disappear or something or if I Whoa, what is <laughs> well, that supposed to be? Well, mean? I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, We're not going or anywhere. or before the table disappears, maybe you do something different. I don't know. I understand. I just, this table the prophecy, if you ask me, this thing's not going anywhere. All I'm saying is total fear of missing out syndrome. I don't want that to happen, so I... I, 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 I <laughs> oh, things are getting crazy here. Let's talk about this last table. All right. <laughs> this is our sojourn table. Things are getting things are getting exciting. Uh, this is our sojourn table. It's uh, rectilinear. It doesn't have the curvature of the prophecy. Uh, in the interest of space, it's a little bit more of a Danish modern-looking table. And it's your standard dining room size, but it has all the same features. Um, it has an ascendable playing surface. It's got the dual magnetic rail system. And it also has uh, a leaf inside that is one piece but it's still double-sided you can still do wood or sweat and it looks like looks like it has the crank functionality as well too yeah right? so everything everything can uh, go up and down just like that table and um, yeah the crank can actually be put on either side so these oh, nice. little covers here you'll see on both ends so many people walk up on the other end they're like what the hell is this <laughs> and I was just like, well <laughs> it's a people yeah exactly. <laughs> um, yeah we also offer the chairs the chairs have some cool features to them um, it's 
you bring it out just like wow, this. Wow, that's really nice. Storage oh. on the inside for clutch games or uh, you know anything that you really want to keep on hand. And, um, I, I, like, I like the bench too. That's really the nice. Bench, so the bench to me is great. You can fit like three or four people on it. It's, uh, it's so much cheaper than buying like three or four chairs. <laughs> um, and then of course the storage in this one is, is up. Oh yeah. Definitely for the long side of the table, I think a bench is the way to go. Yeah. So on top of that, you can hide it. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the only other thing is this is uh, our new chair that we're reviewing this weekend. Um, it's a little bit different. This is more of like a, a feminine chair. It's very, very uh, curvy in its design. This is more of like a masculine design where mm -hmm. everything's straight lines. Um, and the only, the, the key difference is this this thing's got some bells and whistles with the shelves on the bottom and the storage inside of the uh, inside of the upholstery. This one right here is definitely built a little bit more for people that need like lumbar support. Mm -hmm. uh, these, these curved slats right here really help you with your posture when you're playing and uh, this guy right here is a little bit more flat doesn't give you as much support but it's got cool very nice very and nice. that is and that is about everything we have here at uh at wormwood <laughs> awesome well thank you bobby you got it man all right